Happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome into the Gramlick and MacLean podcast presented by Ingalls, the official supermarket of Gramlick and MacLean. And Happy New Year, Mac. It's 2024. Ooh, have what you the had heck? to write? Have you had to write a date yet? Yes. And did you mess it up? I did. did you I mess did, it up? and I had to think so hard about it. It was terrible. <laughs> I haven't yet. I, I've got a couple of things I need to do that I, I do have to do that. And I just hope it's not like an ugly three that I turn into a four. Like, I, I hope I nail it. I hope I get it. That did happen to me. And I think that happens to everybody <laughs> because it's true. so weird to change the year, Mac. Yeah. It is so, so weird. We are going to recap some bowl season. This will be our only episode on. of this week. And then we'll be back next week with some more episodes as we get into our ACC under review. We took a little time off after our FSU uh, bowl game episode, which, of course, we'll get to that game, unfortunately. <laughs> Wait, but there was a game? We're glad. Played? Yeah, there was, there was a game. We're Just glad kidding. to love be you back. Guys. Love you. Love you. Glad to love be you. back. Mac, uh, I wanted to know about the vibe down there hmm. at the Orange Bowl because you guys were down there at ACC Network. Yeah. I assume pregame vibes were high. <laughs> Wrong assumption. <laughs> oh. Wrong assumption. They were I, I tried to opt out of the Orange Bowl as well. Uh, and it was very <laughs> unsuccessful. I was told that I had to be there. Um, it was just, it was weird, KG. It was I mean, weird. It, it was so weird because one, you already know like a billion people aren't playing. And then yeah. as we're doing the show, we see people not running out in pads. And we're like, oh, this guy's not playing. Braden Fisk isn't playing. He's hurt. Allegedly. He's not playing. Uh, you know, there was a couple, there was a handful of other guys. We're just like. Oh, he's not playing either. Okay, awesome. So we're down to Great. <laughs> a walk-on starting right now. Like, we're just like, this is not good. Uh, and so our my, my kind of mood during the show slowly started to be like, I want to be home so badly. I do not want to be here. I don't know. This is miserable. And then, of course, You're you like, have to sit there. Who am I even talking about? Yeah, now? right. Like, like, who is this guy? Not, it's not a depth chart. It's a roster. Like, I'm looking at numbers <laughs> and I'm trying to find people. Jeez. It was brutal. It really was brutal. And you know what? Kudos to, you know, FSU fans. I, they were loud. I mean, they showed up and, uh, you know, definitely made a presence. The band, there's a lot of memes going around about the band, about how loud they played the fight song they're like down 60 they points and that fight song always do it's blast that is, shout out to the that band. is an fsu trademark oh yeah oh yeah they're loud give and up they, a third down they let you know do. they let you know so i gotta give kudos to the fans uh that, that did show up and you know it, it's i don't know it's also awkward because this lawsuit going around it's like are we friends are we not friends like right, i love that right. can we dap up and all this stuff and everybody was we're everybody still was friends cool. yeah yeah oh yeah definitely there's a big difference there um and, and so it was great it was great to see you know people kind of you know I, I talked to you know michael alford a good bit that was awesome love mike uh and his support and, and got to see some of the support staff so our guy derek um just briefly saw coach i mean he's so locked in and, and i wasn't there for a long time going to the Clemson game. Um, so it, it was, I don't know, KG, it, it was just with all the great stuff that happened all year long um, for the ACC, for FSU specifically, it was like, this isn't a real representation of yeah, how the yeah. end of the season should be. And if it feels like, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy to think that. I'd love to hear from FSU fans. I called you out for, or asked you for last time to give us some feedback. Uh, we'd love some more now. Like, how do you feel? Because it felt like to me, it's just like, the whole season, like, was for what? Like, who cares? But you won the ACC. That, that's super unfair to me. I think that's. I think it is very successful. And I think the, uh, you know, just getting to that moment in general is, is amazing. <clears throat> and a massive, successful season. A great, you know, kind of foundational piece, which I, I kind of said this on TV. What What can we do now? Like, what can FSU yeah. do now? Because I think the circumstances are obviously dra dramatically different. Um, but my redshirt freshman year, our red, or freshman year, um, you know, we lost 70 to 33 in the, in the orange bowl, still the most points, Georgia, you could have helped me out. I thought we were going to do that. Uh, <laughs> I thought Clemson was going to get wiped from the record books there. We're still there. We're still number one, most given up ever. <laughs> um, but then we go on and, and have the best run in, in Clemson history. Can FSU replicate that to where this you know, this projects them to where, you know, they, they take it to another level. Obviously, it's probably hard to, to have the greatest run ever because that was insane what they did in the 90s. Um, yeah. You know, but can can they turn it into something like that? So I, I am fascinated to see where FSU goes, you know, from here, KG. 
Yes, we, we're going to get to some more FSU. We're going to talk about the DJ Uyunglele situation back, here. Back in the league. Let's go. Trust me, Mac and I both know how to pronounce it. So <laughs> we're right. ready That's to roll. Right. Anybody needs any tips, hit us up. We got you. And, and you We've know, got a it, lot of familiarity. You know what's so funny about that is people still butcher it. Like, I was oh, watching yeah. a broadcast like, the other day. On. I'm just like, man, that was so bad. It's just, not that hard. Just say DJU if you can't say it. All right? We'll help For you FSU out. For FSU fans. We'll help you out. Uy Unga Lale. There you go. Break it out. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Mac, we got to get to a message from Ingles. We're going to talk about who we feel like are the big winners from bowl season. Virginia Tech, Clemson, Georgia Tech, and then kind of hit on the rest and talk about DJU. But I have to shout out Ingles because I spent New Year's Ooh, in Asheville. Come on. The home of Ingles. baby, the hub. And the house we were staying at right next to us, Ingles. <laughs> We went to Ingles for everything. Mac, you've been proud. Uh, Nick made a beef tenderloin. Ooh, come so on, big good. Nick. Come on. And we picked up some wine there. We picked up some Brussels sprouts, some potatoes, all sorts of stuff. Brussels sprouts. For a little spread. <laughs> hey, hey, they were well. Big Brussels They guy. were, you know. Big Brussels guy. I'm with you it. You gotta love I'm Brussels. With it. <laughs> so it was nice to be in, in the homeland of Ingles, Mac. It's time to discover the convenience and time savings of contact-free pickup with Ingles Curbside. Just visit shop.ingles-markets.com or download the app, and your Ingles personal shopper gets to work with specialized training on how to select the freshest items for a pre-scheduled pickup. They'll even text you with updates. You pull up to a designated space, and your personal shopper delivers your items right to your vehicle. Fresh, fast, and affordable. It's all in the bag. Ingles. Low prices. Love the savings. Mac, let's talk about some of these teams that we think really did some damage in bowl season. And let's start with Clemson in the Gator Bowl. Chomp, chomp, Gators. Uh, unfortunately, an accountant was not eaten after this game. Like a Pop-Tart. <laughs> and, of <What>? course, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you didn't really get what I was saying. Mike Golick Jr. tweeted that. I thought it was hilarious. Come on, baby. It was right Go after Joe. the Pop-Tart Bowl, and he said... <laughs> So are we all just going to eat an accountant oh after God. this game? <laughs> this is the tax layer That's bowl. amazing. But that did not happen. And um, really the star of the Pop-Tart Bowl was the Pop-Tart, but we, I guess we have to talk about that game for a second. But Clemson beats Kentucky 38-35. to Mac, this game was crazy. This may, besides the playoff games, which were both really great, this may have been the best game of bowl season. Like yeah. the most exciting, um, the craziest finish. Clemson just going bonkers in the fourth quarter, but also turning the ball over a bunch. Kentucky just giving the ball away to the Tigers. Kate Klubnick leading a game-winning drive, which I think we all kind of had our doubts as as that was unfolding. (laughs) Mac, you were there. You were there in person. What what was the atmosphere like? What were your thoughts on this game? Yeah, it was was incredible, first of all, just to, to be able to go as a fan. Uh, that that was my first time going to a Clemson game as a fan with Kaki, my wife, since the 2018 national championship. I mean, it was wow. crazy. It was crazy. when I was <laughs> really like your good luck charm. Man. I know. I need to go with her more, or I'm her good luck charm. We're Clemson's good luck charm. I look at it that way. You guys together. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we haven't seen Clemson lose a game as fans since like the 2017 uh, Sugar Bowl. That was the last time. So it's pretty good. Dang. Pretty good. Uh, you know, we we do our part. We try to help out. Um, but it was awesome. It was so much fun to to be there. Uh, saw so many awesome fans and, and people coming up to me and talking, which was super, super fun and, and made me feel like a celebrity in front of my friends. That was cool. Famous. Appreciate you guys helping me look big time. Um, and, and it was a, it was a pretty good crowd. Um, now compared to last year's Gator Bowl, it, it was like incomparable. Uh, you know, Notre Dame traveled really well. I think that was the first bowl mm. game for, you know, South Carolina in like 50 years. So they, they were there too in full support. <laughs> They couldn't wait to get there um, and, of course, lost that game. So there, there was a ton of people there. I will say the upper decks were bone dry. That was – it was a little embarrassing, but also it's like – I know, did see that. You're not, it's not a playoff. I mean, what can you expect? It's not um, a playoff. Yeah. And, like, I don't think Kentucky's bringing 40,000 people. Which, you know so. what's crazy? Kentucky fans are, like, nuts about football. I thought that they were going to weigh out number class. They are. I thought they, they were going to weigh out number. It was probably – it was probably 50-50 or close enough. Um, yeah, it kind of looked like that on TV. And, they, you know, they got going early. Like, they're beating Clemson. I'm just like, God, this sucks. Why did I come? Why did I come to this game? Kentucky. This is embarrassing. It's like 21-10 to 10 or maybe worse. And I'm just like, God. It was 21-10, to 10, This is yep. brutal. 
Um, and we're sitting next to some some Kentucky fans, and they were just obnoxious. I'm just like, oh god, this is not good. Um, and then Clemson just goes nuts and, and creates all these turnovers, back to back turnovers on back to back plays for Barrett Carter. Uh, Khalil Barnes had done that the, the week before, and which previously it hadn't been done since like the 90s. Then it happens back to back games for Clemson. Mm. Um, and they just went nuts. So that, that was so fun to see. And, and, you know, really just the, the, I don't know that I wanted to see a little bit more from the offense throwing the football. And, you know, I, I it is what it is at this point. Like there, there's some, you know, serious growing up that needs to happen. And, you know, giving up, Eight sacks. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just. It's a jarring number. It is. And it's brutal. And it, it's like 50-50 O-line versus quarterback versus whatever protection just outnumbered. Just is what it is. Um, and I just, I see that. I'm like, gosh, that stinks. Like, how much better could it be? And, you know, not hitting guys when they're open and guys dropping. By. It, it really felt like just this perfect, here's the season, all in one. And really yeah. for the last couple of seasons, it's kind of felt like this, but Clemson found a way and they were able to get it. And they really leaned on Moffa and leaning on ship um, who together, I mean, if that's the last time we see those guys together, I mean, that was an awesome showing. I think Shipley had like 150 all purpose yards. Moffa obviously went an MVP and having four touchdowns. So, I mean, that, that's, that's what you want. That's what you thought you would see from those guys from the entire year uh, kind of perspective there. Defense, like I said, kind of stepped up big when you needed him most. So many young guys. I mean, Khalil Barnes being the leading tackler, I, I think he has a chance to be really, really special. Wade Wood has looked great. Uh, Barrett Carter, mm -hmm. again, doing his thing. Peter Woods uh, and, and company kind of there as well. TJ Parker. So th I think the future is really bright uh, for the future of the Clemson defense. But the, the undeniable, any Clemson fan you ask, best thing of that game was, as you mentioned, KG, that two-minute drive to win the game. Yeah, uh, Cade was essentially perfect. Um, I think he might have been perfect. An eight for eight or something of that nature, like 70 yards, 60 yards, um, and just moving the ball. I mean, finding guys, getting out in space, making it happen. And uh, like you, I had my doubts. I'm like, okay, well, this is going to be a rough way to end it. And then he just marches Let's down the honest. field. Yeah. And, and I mean, what? Yeah. It's crazy. What were you thinking? Sick. I mean, everyone kind of, yeah, the, I think, the, was thinking the, the same thing. You know, the, the thing that I heard Coach Sweeney say after the game of Kate is very comfortable going fast, and that's what they had to do. Hmm. And that, that just kind of takes thinking out of it. You move him around a little bit. He's just, you know, getting the ball to, to, to guys and, and moving the ball just quickly. Um, how can you channel that? You know, obviously there needs to be growth in general at that position where we don't we shouldn't have to do one singular thing to be good. Um, from a, a coaching perspective and coaching points. Um, so I think there's a lot of growth there. But if not, how do you change who you are and, and do that? Coach, you know, back in the day, Coach Rick did that with Charlie Ward, and he won a Heisman in a national championship because they just ran a fast break offense. They were just always in the two-minute drill. Um, and, and so it, it is going to be fascinating. How can Clemson grow from this game and what can they take from it? What can these players take from? And, uh, you know, essentially – keep riding this wave of, of five games in a row here. There's so much to talk about with this game. I think you hit on a lot of it, Mac. The, the one thing that was different that that was different for Clemson on this five game winning streak was winning the turnover battle. And in the end, Kentucky turned it over four times. Some of those were forced. Some of those, I mean, they were all forced, if you will, <laughs> but Kentucky was just kind of fumbling that thing. And Clemson took advantage of it. They did. I thought, it was pivotal, uh, pivotal when Kentucky fumbled it and then Cade threw that pick. Yeah. And that was kind of a, here we go again. Yeah. Like, this Let is just, just how tell it's you about be. That. The, the okay. Clemson side was going berserk. I mean, we were losing our minds. So excited. We got the ball. Let's go. Like, here we go. You know, it's about to just blow open. And yep. then that pick happens and you're just like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, it was and silent. That was it was kind of silent. It was so it was the that was It was the height of the game. And then silent, yeah. and you're just like, oh, my God. It was kind of a microcosm of the season. Yes. That yes. stretch right there where you do something good and you do something really bad. But Clemson bounced back from it, and Cade stayed in the game and was able to lead that drive. And I think he grew up a lot on that drive. Now, does, does one drive solve everything? No. But he looked very confident. He looked very poised. And I think 
it can give him confidence yeah. and it can give the coaching staff confidence. It can give the other guys on the roster confidence in him, but still a lot of improvement needs to be made for sure. Mac Moffa was so good. Shipley had that big uh, return yeah. that I thought was a, was pivotal. And then of course went out, but I, I read it wasn't a serious injury, right? Mac? That's what it sounds like. That sounds like no ligament damage, okay. no tears, no surgery. That's, um, that's really yeah, good. Cause yeah. gosh, that would have been awful. I think the question going forward is, you know, who comes back right. <laughs> out of those running backs? The other thing too, Mac, Brenningstool was so good. really good. Yeah. Yeah. Nine catches for 91 yards. He's got to be, and he has been, but he's got to be a centerpiece mm -hmm. of your offense next year with Antonio Williams, with Tyler Brown, yeah. and then maybe some of these freshmen step up. Adam Randall made a few big plays, yeah. uh, helping to convert when Clemson needed it. So you saw a lot of good things. Winning the turnover battle was huge. Coming back down 21-10, Clemson had not come back down in the fourth quarter in a really long mm -hmm. time. I believe it was since the 2016 national title, which is an insane wow. stat. So a lot of really good things. Still some, you know, things that you want to see clean up, but you get the win yeah. and you do it in a way where you can build on Yes, exactly. And I think that's the... That's the, you know, the thing that everyone's going to be hyper-focused on with all these games and all these people. And that's what, you know, I'm so excited for the weeks to come. You know, we're going to sit down with people that cover these teams or are a fan of these teams or cheer for the, whatever it is, very intimately and, and have, you know, a little bit different point of view and, and are very close to these programs. And I, and I can't wait, you know, just to do that and to break all these downs and to talk about the future because there's a lot of excitement in the ACC and some of these top headline brand, you know, type teams as, as well that, it was only better and only good for the league to continue to build on that. So Clemson's the first, you know, one that we kind of break down here and excited to see how they grow. But, you know, I think the overarching things, and again, we'll dive into all of this way more, way more in detail, but you know, obviously improvement at the quarterback position, improvement along the offensive line, improvement of the yeah. wide receiver core, and then just building retooling and, and adding to that defense of, Okay, who's it going to be? And just eliminating turnovers overall. I mean, that, this, this is yeah. Coach Sweeney said it, but 2023 was the year of the turnover, you know, for Clemson. That's what everybody's going to remember this year for and kind of say woulda, coulda, shoulda, you know, because of that. But nine wins, you know, probably finishing maybe in the teens, uh, you know, being ranked there and yeah. you know, nine straight or excuse me, 13 straight seasons of nine or more wins is is just incredible. So Clemson, the model of consistency, uh, fun to see that and, and, you know, excited to see where they grow and where they go from here. Mac called it before bowl season. He said the three teams that had the most to gain out of the ACC were Clemson, Virginia <laughs> Tech, and Georgia Tech. And that rang true. All three of these teams won their bowl yeah. games and did so in um, exciting and, and for Virginia Tech's especially convincing fashion. Let's talk about the Hokies. Virginia Tech beats Tulane 41-20 to 20 in the military bowl. Kills them, <laughs> especially in the second half. Tough, rainy conditions. Virginia Tech fans were still out there in the rain, didn't care. They ran all over Tulane, Mac. 50 carries <laughs> for 362 yards. What even is that? Yeah, it was impressive is what it was. It's domination. It is, is, it it is domination. Yeah, I mean, impressive. you're talking about an 11-win team that was playing in their conference championship that had a lot of juice that the broadcasting team wanted to let you know these guys are excited to be here. They're not mad. They're not this and that. I'm like, why do you keep talking about that? Why does it keep being brought up? And then you lose by 21. Um, you know, I, I thought that it was amazing what we saw from those guys. The game plan was fantastic. It was terrible weather. Hokey fans filled up the stadium. I mean, it was a home game uh, for Virginia like they Tech. Do. Yeah, it was amazing to see that and to see that support and just the excitement you know, that I think is going to continue to rise and, and be a part of this program for the years to come here. But you're talking about a two-lane defense that I think was given up maybe 90 yards a game, maybe better than that. Maybe it was like in the 70s. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think had given up a 100-yard rusher or a 200-yard rusher, whatever it was, something wild. And Virginia Tech said, we're going to go for 360. And uh, <laughs> they said you're going to like it. And we're going to run for <laughs> touchdowns. We're going to run for 50, 40, 60, whatever it is at a time. Um, and there was nothing they could do. Like, literally, nothing that they could do to stop it. Kyron Drones threw the ball relatively efficiently. It's horrible conditions. Mattered, you know, most right. got a couple of touchdowns in there. Um, but overall, just the attack that I saw from them and the defensive prowess as well. I mean, they, they were aggressive. They were getting after it. Um, 
And it just, it gets me jacked up for the future because with everything that's coming back, uh, with, with, with a great wide receiver core, with a solid uh, quarterback that I think can take it to another level and really progress. Mm-hmm. He has some, you know, Clemson fans that are listening and Virginia Tech fans know very well. Uh, he's got a little Taj Boyd to him. You know, the way that he runs the ball, mm. the tenacity, the power. I mean, when Taj ran power, it was a wrap. I mean, he, he's getting the first down and maybe scoring, you know, every single time. If he can improve his passing and take a step passing the ball to get more like Taj, who is one of the best uh, to ever do it, man, look out. Virginia Tech, for real, I think can make some noise and, and really is going to be fighting. I don't even know if it's a dark horse spot at this point, KG. I mean, I think they're fighting for a spot in Charlotte and really making some noise. Mac, I saw a way, 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 way too early 12-team playoff projection that had the Virginia Tech Hokies Was in that it. from uh, Sons of Saturday VT podcast? Was that their prediction? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our guys. Could've salute. Been. Big salute. <laughs> Look, you have a 12-team playoff now, All you right? got to do is win. Louisville would have had a very good chance at yeah. the 12-team hey, playoff. That committee can't so, keep you out no more. You win, you're in, baby. <laughs> Well, sorry, we can start on them. <laughs> but it's it's so funny now in college football that how much more excited you are when you have everybody returning. Yeah. Because literally nobody right. has as much production returning as Virginia yeah. Tech yeah. of guys that either are coming back because they're not draft eligible or didn't transfer. Right. So that's just fun if you're a fan because you know these players and, and you're excited about these players and you've become invested in drones and in tootin and in all these different guys so i'm excited for hokey yeah. fans because i know that they are just through the roof excited too and i thought it was really good to see mac virginia tech got down early they started badly they had that fumble and, and tulane scored and it didn't right. matter they still were able to to be fine and to win the game and run all over them dominated the second half just a, a great sign for virginia yeah. tech and I'm not guaranteeing any sort Uh-oh. of uh, playoff situation. There. I'm not guaranteeing. No, no, no. This is not a grandly guarantee. But I'm just telling you what that's I'm right. Talking. And that's you're just be very reporting the news. You're just reporting the news. Just reporting the well, news. Well, here, here's what I also said on TV that I was so jacked up about because these, again, these hokey fans are just some of the best, if not the best. The way that they travel. By the way, I'm going to Virginia Tech this weekend. I'm calling the Virginia Tech NC State women's home. game that I am. So Queens excited of the castle, to hanging out with my friends. That's uh, right. I'm excited That's for right. it. That's going to be a huge game. Um, and, and just the you know the way that they support this team through the dark times, right? Like through some bad yeah. football seasons. Now you get to take that step. And and I was just saying, I can't imagine how much better and how much more exciting you know those fans are going to be. What that environment's going to be a true you know right. twelfth man. Oof. And Eddie Royal chimes in. That's how it was when I was there, brother. And it was great. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So I can't wait. <laughs> when Virginia yeah, Tech was balling. one of the best teams in right, the sport. Playing for yeah. baddies and, and, you know, competing and, and you know, being disappointed if they're not in a BCS Bowl. So that's where, I, I, again, I know we, we got to be patient and a lot to be excited for. This team, right, at the end of the day, right, seven and right. six. Let me pump the brakes a little bit, but I'm excited. And I think there's a lot there, um, especially when those Tigers roll into Lane Stadium. I can't wait for that. I can't wait for that. Already, we we uh, don't have the date yet, we'll right? But already marking that's my right. calendar. That's right. Just all fall. Fall is will, circled. We know that's happening that's somewhere. Right. Circle it all. Correct. Another tech that did big things, Mac, Georgia Tech beat UCF in the Gasparilla Bowl, 30-17. to 17. And UCF, known for their rushing attack, Georgia Tech ran all over them. This, it, this sounds pretty similar to Virginia yeah. Tech. 53 carries for the Yellow Jackets for 284 <laughs> yards. And it was a QB-RB duo. Jamal Haynes had 18 carries for 128. And, of course, Haynes King was also exceptional. They won the turnover battle. Georgia Tech did not allow any sacks. Some of that is because they ran the ball 50 right. times. But still, I mean, this was a game where a lot of people were picking UCF. I'm pretty sure UCF was favored. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, Mac picked UCF. Yeah, uh, didn't mean to bring that up. Georgia Tech continues to build on what they did this year. There's a lot of similarities between Georgia Tech and Virginia yeah. Tech. You have an exciting transfer quarterback, uh, both from the Lone Star State, that have done really exciting things and really rejuvenized your program. Yeah, yeah no, no question about it. And, and to to touch on quickly uh, the, the picks and how bad I did, I, I think that kind of in hindsight a, a little bit we don't have some to, instances man. um 
it goes to show the strength of the league. It really does. Because some of these teams, you know, just didn't quite finish like they wanted to, like we thought maybe they could. And so I thought that that would maybe linger a little bit. In, and they, this is against conference opponents. And so I thought that was going to linger right. in the bowl season and we, we'd have some letdown in certain places. And that wasn't the case. When we went out of conference in, in certain you know, matchups, they, they won. I mean, you're talking about going against the Sun Belt champion, going against the you know, conference, maybe USA, uh, runner-up. You know, teams that have 11 double-digit type win seasons that have expectations of championships that these teams go and, and, and are able to beat. So huge shout out, you know, to those ACC teams that, you know, I thought were not going to make that American is, is the other conference, not conference USA, uh, that, that go, I was there thinking there, um, which was amazing. And, and Georgia tech being one of them, uh, I, I thought that UCF was going to be able to run the ball at will and, uh, to hold them to, you know, 160 yards. I think they, you know, averaged over 200. I mean, that, that's amazing yeah. for them to be able to do that. And then to lean on your big offensive line, and say, nah, we're going to be the ones that establish this thing. Like you mentioned, 53 rushes, 284 yards, a handful of touchdowns. Jamal Haynes was just freaky. So fun to watch his explosive nature and, and just time and time again when they needed it, just go to him, and, and he's going to make it happen. Had 128 yards, I believe was named the MVP of the game. Um, so that was fun. And I, I think all three of those teams we just touched on right there really have great momentum going into this offseason. And now, what can you do with it? You know, a lot of people want to just kind of, right. you know, scrap season and say, oh, that doesn't matter. It does matter, okay? It, it's building blocks for what's next, and, and how can you rely on that, especially when you have as many guys coming back as they do? Right. I mean, if they if these guys, if their roster was just going, leaving, kind of, honestly, kind of like Florida State's roster, just being um, stripped apart, if you will, maybe you don't take as much. But Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech are turning yeah. a lot, and so is Clemson, yeah. too. So. Those were our three big winners from bowl season, Mac. Let's talk about some of the – actually, before we get to DJU, any other <laughs> – to be honest, guys, we don't want to sit here and break down Rutgers, Miami. We don't <laughs> want to sit here it. and break down Louisville, I'm Southern Cal, uh, North Carolina, West Virginia, UNC. I don't Sorry, even – I'm not sure if they even showed up. <laughs> um, Syracuse, sheesh. I thought Duke beating Troy Huge. was a big win. Um, I had Duke covering, did not necessarily have them winning, <laughs> but that was a big program win yep. for them as Manny Diaz takes over. I was impressed with BC, had them covering, Mac. Crazy. Wasn't sure they were going to win, but uh, old Tommy <laughs> ran all over <laughs> those boys. Uh, huge shout out to Duke. <laughs> I mean, I thought they played with their hair on fire. And you know what's interesting about that game too? I, I will. Maybe they watched They probably episode. did. They probably did. And I, I will say this. <laughs> There was like five or six guys that were in the portal, committed, maybe not signed. I don't know how that works with other teams that I thought were gone that played in the game. And I was like, the Manny like, effect. Oh no, they're no, gone. Some of those they're guys, you're gone. right. They're... Jordan, Jordan Waters, Waters uh, Peebles. Yes. There was a handful of other guys, and I'm like, wait. Why, how are you playing in this game? I really respected that he I played. Mean, that's great. It's I just would have liked to have known that. I didn't know that, and yeah, so yeah, I'm making yeah. my picks, and I'm like. <laughs> Where the heck did these guys come from? They fought like crazy. Uh, offensive line did great. Um, it was like role reversal, and uh, they made it happen. That huge shout out to Duke. Everything that they kind of went through there, who played, who stayed, who didn't, uh, and for them to go out in a win was was really really cool. So massive shout out to those guys, and then Boston College. I mean, I thought these guys. Listen, I thought they were going to get ran out of town. I thought that there was no shot. <laughs> That they were even going to be in this game, and whether you know is what it is, you know, but but still thought SMU was going to do their thing. Uh, and, and at halftime, you know, they're scoring fourteen. I'm like, okay, here we go. And then the fourth quarter from Boston College, the grit, uh, the determination, yeah. the, the the culture, all came together, and they said, "Hey SMU, welcome to the ACC." Here's a baseball bat to the face <laughs> by Tommy Castellanos, the MVP <laughs> trophy. Uh, that was incredible. So SMU, welcome. Uh, pony up because we play some big boy football here and a uh, huge shout out to BC for getting that dub that that was that might have been the the most shocking outcome um in regards to an ACC team winning because I, I just I, I didn't think there was any shot that that would happen I just think when you have Castellanos and you're not used to playing that kind of athlete at quarterback it it can be yeah, very 156 difficult. yards a couple tutties it was very impressive. yeah I thought it was going to be an issue for us maybe SMU won't just show up and and 
you know, finish near the top we'll of the see. league. They're I missing their starting quarterback. Don't think so. You know, Jennings played know, well, whatever. And they've been Dude, going to the portal. portal. Oh, buddy. Just yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah. wait till you see this team. They They're going to be a different looking got, team uh, when uh, Boston travels to Dallas in a couple of months here. That's right. They got money to spend. Okay, Mac, let's finish up this episode with a little Florida State talk. Come on, They Mose. lost to Georgia State 3 <laughs> But What was that? <laughs> that's not really. <laughs> How many? <laughs> you know what I wish? You know what I wish we could do? I wish we could uh, have Rich like bleep it out. They lost bleep. <laughs> Like it's a, an offensive That's word. Amazing. I love that. They lost 63 to 3. 63 to 3. It's terrible. It's unbelievable. I thought it would not be good. I didn't think it would be a TCU yeah. Georgia yeah. situation. Yeah. So I just don't know if you can take anything from the game. To your point, Mac, they just didn't no. have anybody. No. They didn't have anybody. Never watch the tape. It's, don't ever look at it again. It's pointless. No. It's absolutely pointless. Yeah. Um, I love what Kirby Smart said that, hey, we got a problem, college football. We yeah. got to figure this yeah. out. I mean, you're talking about an undefeated conference champion, and to, to get housed like that with not having their guys, I mean, it's just – it was brutal. And, uh, you know, I, I think, again, Florida yeah. State, you, you know, your season ended ACC champions. I mean, that, that's when it was over. That was the last time that team was together as a unit, as right. a full team. At you know, relatively full strength. You didn't have Jordan Travis, obviously, and I understand that. Um, but that that was it, and so I think that's where you just cut it, and uh, you know that's where that's where we stop. And, and you know, looking at building, you know, for next year and the pieces that you have coming back, you need to go get some pieces. You know, getting DJU is a great start, um, but you need to go get a lot more. Uh, you know, or thinking that you know the next guys up and and people that weren't able to play because of injury that are coming back, you know, are going to do enough, but here's kind of the world we live in. You, you play in that portal and you bring in a bunch of different guys and everybody's right. excited. When those guys move on, you've got to have others ready. And, and I know that they've been building, you know, some high school classes, but I think you need to go get more in the portal. I think you need to, you know, lock down mm -hmm. and, and get some guys that are ready to go and ready to play. And um, like I said, DJ, you a, a good start there. A good piece. You live by the portal, you yeah, die by the seriously. portal. And if you live by the portal, I think you got to keep, using the portal. I want to get your thoughts on DJU. And before I get your thoughts, I want to say two things. <laughs> Number one, I want to say, I find this very okay. weird. Now I understand. I have no issue with DJU wanting to transfer because at Oregon state, his coach left and the league he was playing <laughs> in died. <laughs> so I get it. Like, who the heck is Oregon State even going to be right. playing next year and you don't have your coach? I understand. That being said, you are a graduate of Clemson, and now you're going to be the quarterback <laughs> at Florida State. What a world. Does anybody else find yeah, this weird? Yeah. No, it is. It's strange. It is super strange. And, and honestly, the – I got to be honest, Mac, I don't yeah, like and... it. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> That's funny. Um, even the the just coming back across the country, uh, I, I thought it would be yeah, it would have been like, a West Coast, um, you know, thing. Snip, snap, yeah, snip, just snap. to be closer to, you know, family, whatever. <laughs> um, and honestly, fit is going to be interesting too. Uh, you know, because obviously, yes. you know, they they, I don't know, have been. I guess it just is what it is. You know, you just find different pieces and and whatever. Um, yeah, you, I guess. Um, to what you have. He's got a rocket launcher arm. He's going to have a great, you know, offensive line in front of him. You know, I think if he can really commit to the, you know, quarterback power and quarterback run, I mean, that that's electric and that's hard to stop being such a big monster like he is. Uh, but just overall, the, the scheme is going to be interesting to, to see how that changes, you know, with Florida State, having such a guy that can create and be a magician and escape and do these other things, you know, to now kind of, you know, more so looking like we saw these last handful of games where, you know, there, there wasn't a whole lot of points. So we'll see, obviously they loved him and, and think that he can be a, a fantastic you mm -hmm. know, piece to this puzzle. And, you know, how much does he continue to grow? And, and coach Norvell, I mean, I think is exceptional uh, play caller, but also developer. Uh, and, and how can he help, you know, DJ take another step there. So it, it is going to be fascinating. It is going to be very interesting. How does Florida state rebuild? How are they able to, 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 again, build on this, you know, 13 and one season ACC champs uh, where again, a lot of guys moving on to, to the next level, a lot of guys transferring, you know, other places. So 
We'll see. Uh, but I think one thing that we know, mm-hmm. the Knolls are, you know, when the Knolls are good, college football is better. Uh, ACC, obviously better. Um, and I hope they continue to grow because I love this staff, love the players that they have there and think that, you know, they, they've got what it takes. Uh, so I'm very interested to see where they go from here. I saw a quote from DJU basically saying he picked Florida State because yeah. of Mike Norvell and yeah. because of talking with Jordan Travis and how much Mike Norvell developed right. him as a quarterback, but also off the field as well. I want to add this, Mac, because my first thought too was that DJU is a little too much uh, pro style for Florida State, like doesn't want to create as much outside of the tackles with his legs. However, did you know that Jordan Travis only rushed for 176 <laughs> yards no. this year? I wouldn't have guessed that. That it is shocked shocking. me. It is shocking. And I, La- the yeah. year last year he he rushed for 570. Right. And I think I, I will go to say this though a little bit is, you know that there was so much of that you know expectation. Not that they didn't meet it, um, but there was so much of man, this guy's gonna have you know 4,000 yards passing thousand yards rushing like there was a right, lot right. of all of that and this offense but fsu's running back they're so good so they're good. so good yeah you gotta hand it to them that was the other part of it so they need yeah. to reload there but yeah mac that it it surprised me and honestly you look at jordan travis's numbers this year 64 percent completion 2700 yards 20 touchdowns two picks it was the lack of turnovers that yeah. was huge um and of course he really played right. 10 games if you right. count it um, and then seven rushing touchdowns for Jordan Travis. Here's the last thing I want to leave you with. Just some food for thought. DJ used numbers his last year at Clemson versus this past year at Oregon State. At Clemson, 62% yep. completion, 2,500 yards, 22 touchdowns, seven picks, 6.8 yards per attempt, 142 rushing attempts for 545 yards, seven touchdowns. At, Ohio, at Oregon State, I'll tell you the ones that are made, that are big time different or similar. Uh, similar numbers, total yards, 2,600. Similar numbers, passing touchdowns, 21. Picks, seven, exact same. Different numbers, or rushing touchdowns, similar. Six at Oregon State, seven at Clemson. These are the different numbers. At Clemson, 62% completion. At Oregon State, 57%. Mm. At Clemson, 6.8 yards per attempt. At Oregon State, no. 8.4. But this one surprised me. At Clemson, 142 attempts for 545 on the ground. At Oregon State, 68 attempts for 219. Mm. A lot less running the ball yeah. for DJU, and but better yards per attempt, but lower completion percentage. Other than that, yeah. pretty much the same. What was the so, QBR? I think the QBR we'll see. We'll was see what he does. significantly higher. At- His quarterback rating was yeah. 10 points higher okay. so, at Oregon State. I think it was like 135, yeah. 145 yeah. in terms of rating. So we'll see. We'll see. So it is going to be interesting. Yeah, food a little for food thought. for thought there. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to break all this down uh, to talk Florida State. I still yeah. find it weird. That's <laughs> my final thought. Weird as in, well, we can break it down more. We're going to break it down more. We're going to have our guy Ira on. I, just, I saw okay. Ira. I said, brother, we're bringing you back on. He said, just call me. We can set it up. And I can't wait to talk about all this. I want, look, I've never, I've always liked DJU. I hope he'll come on the podcast. I just believe that the same man should not play quarterback for both Clemson and <laughs> Rubs you that's wrong, all, huh? Come on. Hey, KG, you're a lot of people's favorite non-null null, okay? So DJ wanted to be their favorite null. That's Look, all it is. Call me a traditionalist. <laughs> But what are I we love doing? It. I love it. This is the age we're in. This is the oh, world. I'm turn off my it's mic. the world that we're in now. Welcome, everybody. Here we are. Uh, but guys, thank you for tuning in. Here we go. 2024. We're rolling. We're excited. <laughs> uh, like KG said, one episode this week. Next week, we're going to start hitting you with some of these, you know, big time <laughs> breakdowns where we're looking at all these different teams. We're going through it. And I uh, cannot wait to kind of have ACC under review. That's where we are. That's where we kind of break all this down. It's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of great guests, as I mentioned, that are going to join us and, and talk about these ACC teams. So we appreciate you. Thank you so much. And uh, we're excited for this next journey. Big shout out to Ingles, too. We appreciate them. Uh, because as Casey said, these numbers, and you may have saw it on social media, are starting to explode. 
they've been there for all of it. And we love that. We love that and, and continue to you know, really appreciate their support. We also need your continued support to jump over on YouTube, subscribe, jump in the comments section. Uh, my brother-in-law, Cannon, always makes fun. Tell me if yeah, you he agree always with makes me. fun of me for saying that at the end here. But we need your help, people. Come on in here. And, of course, the OGs over on Apple Podcasts. Rate, review, subscribe as well. We would greatly appreciate that. But until next time, we'll see y'all. Thanks.